Uh, how should we start one of these things? Start whenever you want to do. Um, I guess I can do like a pan pizza impression. Click clack down the track. It's time for another exciting let's play of Banjo Kazooie Nuts in the Bolts. Uh, the best banjo game. In my personal opinion. And we're not joking. Up oh, and here comes Log, the, the Pong Man. I forget what Log stands for. Isn't he like the king of video games? Yeah, he is. But what does the L stand for? Or whatever. Like, well, I, I know the O stands for of game. Uh, like the O and G stands for like of games. But like, what does the L stand for? Like, it must be something like war. I think it's actually Lord of Games, if I get that right. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, here's here's the himbo himself. Yeah, the himbo with the terrible rigging job. Can you explain to our audience what a himbo is? Um, it is a cutishly hot, like, big male that obviously I'm just gonna say clumsy I, I don't want to say any other words because himbo is pretty much used more as like a a male variant of like bimbo not even that because himbo just sounds like a like cute funny term like what is it we use it lightly as well you know give us an example of a himbo I'm a himbo <laughs> <laughs> um I thought you were going to say something like Launchpad from DuckTales. Yeah, he's a himbo. Um, some people have said Thor's a himbo in certain senses. Um, I guess I can see that. Yeah. Um, Talk about Thor. The opening of this game kind of is a bit similar to, like, fucking uh, Endgame. For those who actually watch the film. No spoilers. Or else you'll get spoiler blasted if you remember my near video. <laughs> but yeah. Load and load and load and But yeah, never take the himbo nickname seriously. Bimbo is offensive. Himbo no. Once and yes, that is sexist. <laughs> you know, the Smash stage kind of looks a lot like this one. Maybe. I don't know, when I saw that, I instantly remembered, like, the Smash Bros. gameplay. Hun, it is it. <laughs> Here are the games that I haven't played. I guess, for those who are watching... I'm just gonna be honest and say that I have zero nostalgia for Banjo Kazooie. I never really grew up with the games, and I really have no interest in going back to playing the N64 games. Mostly because, like, I don't think they like age super well for like first-time players. He watched me play and saw how difficult and frustrating it is. I mean, if you like the game, go on you. I can I, see the appeal. It's like Super Mario 64, but more like I can see the artsy effort. But yeah, it's your time. Yeah. Um. As we know, watch I, uh, the, as we watch the himbo not be a himbo. You know, I forgot how hot Banjo is. Just at this very moment, <laughs> like <laughs> this specific moment, hot. <laughs> I was waiting for him to I mean, he's a, he's a big boy. <laughs> That's some hot pizza right there. <laughs> but yeah. Um, um, did you want to talk about like redesigns for the characters? Since, well, like, I sort of wanted to go over my my history with Banjo. Oh, um, go right ahead. So, with Banjo-Kazooie 1 and then Banjo-Tooie, um... I sort of knew about it because I grew up as a collector. Um, oh, before... I, <laughs> sorry to interrupt. But just to add, like, one thing. Um, I always assumed... Because you know how, like, video reviewers, analysis, whatever, whatever videos always use, like, the banjo soundtrack. Um, yeah. Until I actually sat down and listened to a banjo soundtrack, I thought a lot of... Uh, 
a lot of the songs from that game are like fair use, like royalty free songs on YouTube. Just because I hear so many people use it. Like, even if it's not related, like, they never mention Banjo in the video, they'll still use the music. Yeah, like, I honestly had literally zero idea. That shows how much she really knew about Banjo. <laughs> but yeah, um, as for my knowledge, like, I, I used to be collect- well, I still am a collector to an extent. Um, but it's, like, so widespread, you can't really say that, like, I get the full collection of everything. Either way, that's a sidestep, but just know that I knew about Banjo-Kazooie and Banjo-Tooie, and I have one friend still to this day that, like, would always say, oh my god, it's a great game, but, like, he said a lot of games were great games. Um, credits to Sean. Um, but yeah, and, you know, I honestly never got to playing it, even though, like, Sean probably had it, um, until after oh, I yeah. played this game. Real quick, uh, you're right, Lord of Games. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking about that for the longest. Like, I knew, I thought he was, like, the, the god of games or something, but that wouldn't be right. But yeah. Um, I really like his design, though. It's simplistic, and, like, he has little mouses. And, like, um, Pong as the face. Yeah, it's really creative. Like... I like this guy. If they make another banjo, no matter, like, what they decide to do with it, I would like to see Log return. I'm sure they would bring it back, um, if it's, like... Also, Viva Pinata. I like that game. I love that game, too. I was gonna get into that slightly. Have you ever watched a show for it? Yes, like, on repeat. <laughs> Um, it's a great show. Um, it's one of those shows where you sort you're sort of surprised at like what they get away with because it's sort of like totally spies where they have a little bit of fetish fuel but not as much. But well, especially for people into dismemberment. That too. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah. I'll get into that in a moment. Like, I'm sure there's going to be another Viva Pinata reference because they came out around the same time. But yeah, when I when I started playing Banjo Kazooie Nuts and Bolts, which by the way I paid full price for, I just thought Banjo was too much of a himbo. <laughs> um, half joking, <laughs> nah. Um, so yeah, just I don't know. I I started playing it and. Other than Halo, this was, like, probably, like, my second or third game, depending on whenever I started Castle Crashers, that I genuinely enjoyed, and I'm legit not joking. And I'm just saying that, like, I just don't have any attachment to the first or second Banjo games. This was my legit first time playing Banjo. And I'll be, like, the legit one to say that I'm one of those people that are so nostalgic for nuts and bolts, and I'm old enough to be criticized for it. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I think it's finally time that even though right now we're a small channel, hopefully this will rise up again and people will look at it in a serious manner, like they did for that damn JonTron video. <laughs> um, I guess, like, the biggest recent video was, like, the Panoops retrospective. Mm -hmm. And even then, like, to be honest, he did come off a bit as, like, an old Banjo fan. Yeah. So, this is more of a let's play from... From two people that are outside of, like, the Banjo fan club. Yeah, the... Outsiders looking in. Yeah, the OG Banjo Club, because I'm nostalgic for this game. I legit beat it two times and got 820 achievement points on this game alone. I don't know, I just find this game really fascinating, because, like, 3D platformers, there's tons of good 3D platformers. Mm -hmm. But, like, this game is kind of one of a kind, 
It really is. I've been trying to find, like, a game of this style and caliber for the longest. Um, like, I understand that, like, this game doesn't really use Banjos and Kazooie's, like, character traits to its best. Um, and that they tried to use mechanics that are completely out left field. Um, but the thing is, is that all in all, I never, like, hated the game for it. Probably because I never really looked for those things, but at the same time, if you if you're engrossed in the environment and all that, and all the characters you're engrossed in, then is it really that bad? I don't like, know. Because I know the original games, like, the reason why I have Kazooie is so you can fly around, throw eggs, and, well, poot out eggs, and barf out eggs, like, because that makes sense, because it's a bird! Um, and then Banjo is, like, he he's a big boy. He, he gets to beat people up. Yeah. Because he's a big boy. <laughs> um, um, did you want to get into like the redesigns real quick before we start like getting really into the game? Yeah, sure thing. Um, so I I, I feel like in my honest opinion, I think the redesigns are fine. I think the biggest point of contention may be the eyes, because like if they kept the same exact design but gave them like the bigger cartoony eyes from the N sixty four games people would be, you know, rather alright with it. And our designs seem alright. Like, Grimtilda's design looks fine. Right. And, like, the renders of the game don't really match up with, like, how they look in-game itself. Hmm. I mean, also, it's just, like... Because, like, the renders, like, don't really do justice to, like, the in-game models. Also, do you remember that this was sort of the era where, like, I, I call it the platformer teenager era, where, like, back in, like, the original Spyro, that, that had Spyro as, like, a seven-year-old child dragon, and then when they bring him on to the next generation, he's suddenly, like, a teenager, um... I honestly feel like Banjo is the same, or, or like, another example, Crash gets tattoos. I think that's teenage enough <laughs> um, to describe it. I mean, it was a legit change, but I also like, I'm gonna be legit saying that I have zero attachment to the original Spyro, Crash, or Banjo games, and liked the generation that came after it. <laughs> Like, for all of them. Across the board. Crash of the Titans, Crash Mind Over Mutant, Spyro... I only played, what? like, Crash of the Titans. I really liked, uh... I really liked Crash of the Titans. I heard Mind Over Mutant was kind of weak, but, um... I don't know. I guess I'm sort of in, like, the boat that, like, I like the... I like various games and series that people consider, like, the really awful black sheep because they're, like, different. Like... I like Crash of the Titans, I like Mario Party 9, and etc, etc. I mean, I wouldn't say that I like them because they're... Well, I, they're like the... I said, I'm, I don't like them because they're different. I like them... Well, For... I don't like them because they're the black sheep, I don't like them because they're different. I just sort of like them because of the fact that I like them. It's just, just in coinc... general, across the board. I just think it's coincidental that some of the games I like in certain series are the ones that everyone, like, detests, like, yeah. hate more than anything. But yeah, legit, I just feel like this, the designs went from complete kid to teenager. Like, I'm just legit saying that, like, that's how I always felt. Like, when I played this game first, and then went to the then when I saw the renders of the N64 era or even the in-game models of the N64 era of Banjo I was just like this looks kitty <laughs> um like he he legit looked like he aged up 
Um, that was my initial response without having critical views on anything um, before. Um, so, I don't know. I just like that age. And maybe it's just because when I was going through my... Uh, like, I like all... I played all these games in my teenage era. So that's probably why I was like... That's probably why I'm associating it as such. Like, I saw all these, like, colorful, cute, amazing himbo characters. <laughs> um, like, sort of grow up with me. Like, even though I didn't play their original games, I felt like they were sort of growing up with me. Like, how people like how um, Harry Potter... Um, sort of grew up with them, um, and how um, Stranger Things is actually having the kids grow up as well, like they're doing time skips and stuff like that, or Ben 10, like those uh, are- here's the, here's the building. Yeah, here's the building mechanics, we should switch over to that discussion. So I think Victor has a much better- like in-depth type discussion about the building mechanics in the well, game. Well, I just think like we barely see building mechanics in games like this. Um, like there's stuff like this in like Kingdom Hearts and stuff like that, but like this game goes like above and beyond. Like whatever you make, uh, you can make some of the craziest shit. Oh, like one of the Viva Pinata guys is uh in the tray. Yeah, they liked using that frog. Which, by the way, he kept on trying to... I remember that frog trying to catch, um... Fergie, I think his name was. It, it was that... I, I don't even know how to describe what Fergie was. He was, uh, what they called a fudge hog. Which there sounds like some sort of, like... He, he just kept on trying to catch him with a net. It was one of those, like, episodic things... Where, like, it's always a constant that he's always trying to catch him for some random reason, I forget. Either way, yeah, you continue about the vehicle <laughs> stuff. <laughs> I don't know, this is what draw me into this game compared to, like, the other Banjo games, because, like... I saw that you can make some crazy shit with this. Like, you even have to exclusively make vehicles, like, you can make... Squidward. <laughs> yeah, Squidward, but... Like, uh, in the Panute's retrospective, he showed, like, a bunch of stuff. Like, uh, he made, like, a functioning wrecking ball. Which, by the way, since we're bringing up Panute so much, we should probably link his video. I guess, uh, so put a, uh, little video... Can we do, like, the little eye? I don't know. I think, um, with talking with JW, Jonathan Wedge, um, which all you know from the Near Automata video, um, what is it? I remember him mentioning to me that there's some type of paid membership thing, or like you have to have a certain amount of subscribers to get that eye function. So I'm just going to leave the link in the description. Simple. Yeah, I guess. Yeah. I thought the video was alright. It did kind of sell me on the game. But, uh, I just felt like, you know, might as well play the game for myself. Because I'm not a Banjo fan at all. So, like, I have... So I don't really think this game's, like, a sin against Banjo or anything. And plus Victor over here, Snack Vic, um, he's... He's into really creative type games, like... I'm not talking about where the actual designers were creative. I'm talking about oh, where, you mean like games where you can create things, where you can create things for like a purpose. Like you gotta remember that Banjo and Viva Pinata came out around the same time as like Minecraft. Did this come out around the same time as Minecraft? Uh huh. And guess who owns Minecraft? Microsoft. So guess what? Well, think about it. I think Minecraft came out a few years later, like near the end of the Xbox lifecycle. And Microsoft out. didn't originally own Minecraft. They bought it. 
Let me bring out my handy dandy phony. So let's see when Minecraft came out. Minecraft. Well, I am excited for is Dragon Quest Builders 2. Minecraft when did it come I never out? really got into like Minecraft. You know, I sort of like Dragon Quest Builders because like it's essentially really similar, but you get like a story and stuff. Minecraft, and I just um, love Dragon Quest like aesthetically. Um, let me just say this. Minecraft came out on May 17th, 2009, and then I'll type in Banjo-Kazooie Nuts and Bolts. Banjo-Kazooie Nuts and Bolts. Damn it, you're right, Victor. Can you believe, like, 2008 was, like, over a decade ago, and we still haven't gotten Gruntilda's land thing. Oh yeah, like when the Xbox, uh, for those who didn't know, when the Xbox One was first shown off, one of the games that was uh, source, yeah, source soft announced was uh, Gruntilda Land. Yeah, there you go. That's a, that's a name. And didn't uh, I forget if nuts and bolts like. What, what are you doing? Get in the car! But yeah, um, a lot of people complain that, like, the worlds feel too barren and, like, characters are randomly placed in every world. Well, to be fairly honest, like, I remember from my first time playing, I don't, I never felt that way. I never felt like it was barren. And even now, just looking at it, it still doesn't look barren. I mean... I don't know, just... I don't really know how to counteract that other than... That, like, if you feel like it's barren, then... Like, in comparison to Banjo-Kazooie 1 and 2, um, then... Like... Ban Banjo-Kazooie and Banjo-Tooie were definitely more about... Uh, like, they were concise to the point, um, and had a lot of limitations, and were a lot more geared towards, like, a linear-type path. Like, why, sure, you can do things at different times, but the thing about this game is, like we said before, is that it's more about making your own way to the objective with your vehicle customizations and all this like i would sometimes like take hours trying to figure out how to do something kind of like finish oh. an objective <laughs> for a second i pressed like, the wrong button i'm so used to, like crash team racing where it goes like three two one go no no where it's more like uh by the way water slows you down a bit but it's whatever. Well, where it was like X to accelerate, so I was pressing the A button. Yeah. But yeah, I would like take like legit like an hour on like a certain objective to get a jiggy. And then my friend Ricky comes up with this off the walls type like vehicle customization that like gets him to the objective like in no time. You know? Um, like, for example, um, what's that YouTuber's name? Um, the, the one that had that, like, retrospective? Uh, Panutes. Panutes. Panutes Toots. Magoots. Yeah, so Panutes, I remember he had. Mr. Pagoo. <laughs> Mr. Smagoo. Magoo. We Where are all the blind Let's Players at? If you're a blind Let's Player, comment down below. We love and appreciate you. Wait, what? <laughs> well, you know, Mr. Magoo was, like, blind. That was the whole joke. I, I don't know who Mr. Magoo is, to be fairly honest. Like, I only know the name. But yeah, regardless, um, Panutes, um, I'm pretty sure he did this reference where, like, um, he did a cheat for, like, you had to stay up in the air for a certain amount of time. Um, but what he did 
was um, he basically made a vehicle that had springs on all axes of his vehicle. So, because they registered you getting off your vehicle as part of, like, the challenge. Like, if you got off your vehicle or, like, or if you touched the ground, like, that's what... Uh, uh, that's this air attack animation reminds you of ukulele. Yeah. But yeah, uh, I, it, it, I never played banjo, but I did play ukulele. Mm. But yeah, if you ever touch the ground, um, that that's when the objective would have failed. But the thing is, is that if you had the springs on, then you would never touch the ground <laughs> until like one of the springs broke. So like, Panutes basically beat the objective like there was no business and I remember having that specific jiggy really hard but he figured it out <laughs> I don't know like, crack the code very simply I mean that's just sort of like a cool thing that you can do with like the vehicle customization it's really open ended where you can do like you know a lot of neat things yeah, so if you feel like the worlds are too open in comparison to Banjo-Kazooie and Banjo-Tooie, then you're not playing the same game as us. <laughs> like, because if you're going to have, like, open-ended vehicle editing, then you have to have an open-ended world. You Should know? we have been, like, paying attention to a story? No, the story... <laughs> the story is pretty much... Like, you have to get a lot of jiggies. That's about it. And... Something about becoming relevant in the game world again or something. Because I wasn't reading a word, I was just talking. I mean, I've been trying to, like, keep track of things. I didn't know if you wanted to do silly voices for the characters or some dumb shit like that. Yuck. <laughs> Nah, I don't want to do silly voices. I'm. It's I mean, probably because we have the volume down for the recording. But do they still do like the gibberish talk in this game? Yeah. I know when I played ukulele, I had to turn down the voices exclusively just due to the fact that. I think everyone did. <laughs> I don't know. I guess with like the original banjo, it was like fine because everyone was used to like. Sort of the lower quality, you know, just sort of the lower quality, like sound bites, and people didn't really care much for like stock sound effects. And like, at least when Banjo talked, it was like sort of like giggling, but with like ukulele, it sounded like he was gasping for air whenever he <laughs> talked. I don't know how you this sounds like, so I was trying to imitate. <laughs> How, how would you say you go, like, how would you try to imitate it? Since you know. Like, he says, like, imagine someone trying to talk while breathing in at the same time. Try it. Bah! <laughs> I, I don't think I can replicate it. Yeah, I'll just put it in it afterwards. <laughs> yeah. By the way, this, this game is very creative. And yeah, if I tried to like do a voice for these characters, I would be completely inexperienced. <laughs> Hello, I'm Bottles. Remember I used to be dead? God, I wish that was still a thing. <laughs> Fuck you, Bottles. <laughs> Wait. Fuck him. <laughs> did he really say that like God, I wish that was still a thing? Like I didn't read the end of it. <laughs> I didn't read the end of it. <laughs> Tell me what happened. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't say that. That was just me being an asshole. So what did he actually say? Did he? I don't know. He was just like, "Oh, I'm tutorial guy." Um, we could just like, uh, yeah, we could just cut off after this mission. Yeah, because if we do like any like serious building stuff, it'll probably be like off. Uh, off screen. Yeah, it'll probably just be off screen. Let's do at least one that's like on screen. Now, why are we green? Is everything green? I don't know. It's weird. I keep trying to get into the vehicle. 
on stop being used to the switch controls okay just let le legit restart the level you don't have enough time I have enough time hun I played this game enough to know when you should just restart look I just have one more ball draft for this one uh-huh hey why is everything green I have no idea and the bloom is on max is this like a graphical glitch it might be Ooh! I don't remember bet the game. this. Bet the N64 game doesn't have this. Exactly. This like garbage piss. Man, <laughs> color fucking correction. all this bloom was this uh, average video game in the Xbox 360 era. You mean the Xbox One era? Well, I'm just saying, you know, like the. The stereotype for games at the time is that everything was brown with an ass load of bloom. Cool. You know, I always like tropical areas in video games. Even though this has like the mechanical aspect, it really looks kind of nice. In the real world, I wear Hawaiian shirts as much as I want. Even in the winter time. Yeah. So I agree with you on that statement. Alright, so how would you like to end off this video, Hoon? Um, I would like to give a personal message to Bottles. Go fuck yourself. You being dead was the happiest moment in my life, but that was ripped away from me. Alright, bye everyone. That cut here. <laughs> I didn't get to say bye. You can just at yourself saying bye. Bottles, I'm happy you got a phoenix down. Now die again. That's what a phoenix down does?